We are off to the Cowlitz Prairie Grange Hall near Toledo, Washington this morning. It's about two hours away and we are after a Turner hay press made in North Carolina. It is interesting in that it is a transitional technology. Early presses were horse-drawn and stationary. Hay was brought from the field to the press by wagon and the hopper was loaded by pitchfork. They were hand-tied bales. This Turner press could be taken to the field, eliminating the need to load the hay wagon. It still needed to be hand-loaded while being pulled by a tractor. A few years later, self-loaders showed up and these old presses were relegated to the scrap heap. This press came to us by way of the Toledo Threshing Bee, a great show that ran for over 50 years. We will miss it. The press is in really good condition, especially for its age, but it will need some attention. The hopper is beginning to rot, and there's a lot of rust in places that need to be arrested as soon as possible. So when we get it home, we're going to start taking it apart a little bit, but not too much because it's really ready to start making hay right now. This press is missing the belt tensioner idler pulley that goes here and it's missing the 90 degree gear drive mechanism that connects to the tractor PTO and a driving wheel for the belt to the main flywheel on the press. We will look for those parts, but in the meantime, we can still press hay with a belt drive and a stationary engine. Turner Manufacturing was established in 1905 in Statesville, North Carolina. They made sawmills, wood saws, gang edgers, hay balers, peanut shellers, planer matchers, peanut pickers, peanut cleaners and separators, and other agricultural items. This unit is their 16 by 18 two-wheel. They offered other sizes and other models. The Willys Jeep connection seems to be a marketing strategy that Willys used to sell their engines. The press was difficult to load because of its location below the level of the trailer and the long tail Easier. on the bale chute. Yeah, we'll put it on the hay press right there where that pin is. Yeah. We can put an axle in there. I went around fishing for a problem. Okay, Warren, say goodbye to it. Adios. You'll see it at the show. First things first, a good pressure wash wouldn't hurt. And then we're going to give it an inspection to see what needs to be done. And I know that the hopper will be a wood project that I'm looking forward to. And we will see what else it needs while we're at it. Wheels are easily removed with just one cotter pin. And the bearings are caged rollers. There's two in there, an inner and an outer, and a spacer in the middle for the zerk to distribute the grease evenly. The hopper is attached with carriage bolts and its condition is such that I need to cut them off so I can protect what's left of the existing hopper boards to use as templates for the new ones.
The new boards are marked using the old boards as a template guide so that I can cut them out accurately. I only learned this recently. Drill part way through with the hole saw, then flip the board over and finish from the other side. It makes removing the plug very simple. Here I'm using the angle gauge to ensure that both sides of the notch for the hay press drive mechanism are even and it makes a perfect V. The angle gauge is used once again to determine the angle of the table saw for the bevel on the end cuts. First dry fitting went pretty good. Have a few adjustments to make. We'll add the dowels to hold it all together in the moisture back at the shop. Final fitting before bolting her down. I have to drill all these holes to mount it from the back side. No, you had it right on the outside. Oh. Right there. And then on the inside there. There you go. <laughs> so I'm not a brain trigger. <laughs> I see that. There you go. Yep. 
Alright. Get your buckets. Hang on a second. Oh, you got all the bolts? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm missing one. <laughs> Did we drop one? No. Oh. That's interesting. I barely got a nut on this one. Gosh. That's this rookie mistake, that's all. I'll show you. Could be, but that washer ain't going on there. Oh yeah, look at that. That flushed right down. Okay, today Randy came by with the hot wrench and we took off the tensioners for the bail uh, boards. Uh, the springs were a little weak. We're going to clean those up and redo them and then put them back on here. We roughed in and stained and finished the hay hopper. And we tried to get the front uh, casting off, but it had been cracked for several years and it just crumbled. So we're going to have to fabricate a new... Um, third wheel up front for this thing and we need some tensioners for the back back here and I think there's some springs that goes on this if I'm remembering right we're going to take all the little pieces and put them in the sand booth and clean them up we don't want it looking too good but we want it to look like we're taking care of it which we are we're going to paint this antique white the original color is this brown right back in here, but we're not going to mess with that. We're going to leave this just like it is, a little patina there. But where we got rust, we're going to have to touch it up with orange and uh, get a lot of grease in here. It's coming together. It's going to be nice. I call this my hired hand. This is probably the best thing that I learned from uh, John Graham. This is an electrolysis bath. We got some chemical magic going on here. We're taking the rust and converting it to ions. Look at that paint peeling off of there. Another day and this thing will be ready for priming. I use Arm & Hammer washing soda and a DC power supply uh, to operate my bath. You can look it up online to get the details. It's a good deal. Got one side done. The other one will be finished shortly. I'm going to chop it right here and look for the bevel 90 degree gear assembly and idler pulley and drive wheel that is missing off the front of this hay press. Wish me luck, more to follow.